everyone to the St. Pete Science Festival. I'm Dr. Harris Ambush. Happy to have you here on this beautiful Friday in St. Pete. We have Christy Bruner here with the City of St. Pete and Healthy St. Pete. You may know her if you've seen her in the park. She does amazing work in our community and she's going to talk to you today about having a healthy and happy mind and body. Christy, welcome so much and thank you for being here. Thank you, Harris. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, St. Pete Science Festival, for having me today. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about having a happy and healthy body and mind. And I'm going to go ahead and get started and share my screen so you can join along with me here. Let's see. Does that look good to everybody? We're all in? All right. Well, I hope you guys have a little bit of space today. Um, we're going to do a little bit of movement. If you don't have movement, you can do it right in your seat where you're seated as well. And if you have a paper, a piece of paper, and it could take some um, notes, we're going to write a little bit down. If you don't have a paper by you, you can always just think of it in your mind as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Christy Bruner. I'm the Community Engagement Supervisor with Healthy St. Pete and your city of St. Petersburg. So I studied exercise science when I was in school. And you might not think of exercise as being part of science, but everything that goes on with our body is trying to be healthy and happy so we can all live wonderful lives. There's lots of different types of science that goes into living healthy lives. Things like dietitians that help us to be healthy and nutritious, sports psychologists to keep our brains healthy and happy while we're playing sports, things like public health specialists that help keep our community healthy, especially when we're going thing through things like coronavirus. So there's lots of different scientists that work to help us keep healthy and happy. So today, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about food and also physical activity. So I think, I hope you guys brought your thinking brains today. And like I said, if you can't write a few notes down, just think of it in your head. So we're going to become food scientists first and think about your favorite meal. So is that a meal that you love to eat because it's so yummy? Is it a meal that you love to eat because it reminds you of your favorite people, your friends, your family at school or at your sports practice? Think of how it feels, how it tastes. Can you taste it right now? Does it make you feel comfortable or excited or loved? And is there a memory around that? Like we said, what does that make you feel in the history? Is it something you ate when you were little? Something you love eating every day? So think about that or take a quick note and write it down because we're gonna talk about the parts of that meal now. I hope you guys have all seen or heard about, maybe you have a picture of this in your school lunchroom. It's called My Plate. And all these different colors represent things that we want to be on your plate every day and every meal. So we see a little part that's red. Those are your fruits. Your green part is your vegetables. That's a pretty big chunk there. The grains are things like rice and pasta and all those great things that grow to give us all of those great grains. Our protein is that little purple section there. And those are all different meats and beans and things that have protein in them. And then the little circle there, it might look like a glass of water in the blue, but that's representing dairy. So that could be a glass of milk, but it could also be things like cheese and yogurt. So looking through that, my plate, we're going to think about that meal that we talked about just a moment ago. If you wrote it down, maybe that'll help jog your memory or just think back to what you thought about your favorite meal. What about all of those five food groups on my plate that we just looked at? Were they all represented? Is there anything that you can substitute? So maybe if you had like a big bowl of spaghetti, if that was your favorite meal, could you think about maybe having some whole wheat spaghetti instead? of your regular white pasta that you maybe usually use. Sometimes that's a little bit of a browner color if it's a whole wheat pasta or bread or rice. And why it's a whole wheat, not just a white pasta or a bread, it's because it has a whole part 
of that wheat grain in there. And that gives you fiber and energy and a little bit more nutrition. So whole grains are always your best idea. Let's see, what else could you put in that bowl of spaghetti to make it a little bit healthier? Could you add in some vegetables, maybe like a carrot, like our friend right here is eating. You could maybe cook some carrots in that spaghetti sauce. You could put in some eggplant or some squash. It's fall time, so there's lots of those things right now. So I'd love for you guys to think about and maybe share later with your class or your teacher some ways that you made your favorite meal a little bit healthier. So... Let's talk about those things that are in all of those food groups that we just saw on my plate. We're gonna learn about why all those different parts are so important. So you, if you can think about these questions as we go th through all these different parts of your food. So what is your definition of a healthy food? You guys can think about that or maybe write it down or share it with your teacher lady later. And how can these healthy foods help us? We'll learn a little bit about that too. And then what are the parts in those foods that make them healthy? So you see the teacher on this little picture here, he's talking about minerals and vitamins and proteins. And maybe you've heard some of those words before, but what do they really mean? And why should we even eat them, right? Why should we be worried about them? So let's discover that a little bit. Vitamins and minerals, these are what we call micronutrients. And we know that micro are things that are really small, right? So you use a microscope to look at things that are really small. Micronutrients are things that are really small, but we need lots of different parts of them, lots of different types of micronutrients to keep our bodies healthy. And it's amazing that scientists before us have studied all of these different things and they tell us how they each protect different parts of our body. That's why we can't just have only spaghetti, even if that's our favorite meal. We can't just have spaghetti all the time because we need to make sure we're taking care of all the different parts of our body. And you see our picture at the bottom here, it kind of looks like a rainbow, right? Have you guys heard of taste the rainbow, eat the rainbow, not just taste the rainbow and Skittles. I know that's what you thought of. Eat the rainbow of all these different color vegetables. So let's talk about vitamins that help protect our skin and eyes. That's where you want to get those green and orange and red um, fruits and vegetables. Vitamin C, you might have heard of that. Eat vitamin C if you're not really maybe feeling very good. If you're just getting over getting sick. So things are like citrus. Those are your oranges. And we all live in Florida. So we're super lucky that we can have lots of fresh oranges and citrus a lot of the time. And then also vitamin D. And these are the vitamins that help our strong bones um, right, and muscles as well. Um, the minerals, another kind of micronutrient, are things like potassium. Those keep our muscles working properly, and those are in uh, things like dairy as well as bananas. If you've ever heard of making the, maybe eating bananas right before you have a sports event, or if you're running or going to be active for a long time, those help keep our muscles working so they don't get um, cramped up. So always good to eat bananas before exercise or working out. Calcium is going to build those strong, um, your dentist always probably tells you to have nice and lots of milk to help keep your bones and your teeth strong and iron to get our blood strong. So isn't it amazing that, that all the scientists before of us studied all of these different fruits and vegetables and foods to tell us how to keep our body happy and healthy. All right. And we're going to go to our macronutrients. So if micro were the small nutrients, the macronutrients include carbohydrates. Have you heard of that? Carbs, carbo, carbo load, right? Those are things that you want to eat that gives you energy. We need energy to keep our bodies happy and healthy, right? So our carbohydrates are going to give us energy to run, jump, and you even need energy to blink your eyes. You even need energy to keep your heart beating and to keep your brain healthy. So all those things take carbohydrates. So those are in things um, like our, our grains and our pastas. We were talking about how we can make it a healthier choice by having whole grains. And part of carbohydrates is also in fiber. So fiber is a small part of those carbohydrates that make us feel full, that keep us feeling full and make sure that we eat enough. All right, we're going to stand up. If you have some space or you can stay sitting down, but since it's almost Halloween, we're going to do a Frankenstein walk. And if you can't do it right now, you can bring it home and show your mom and dad and your brother and sister how to do it later, okay? So let's see if I can scooch back. We're going to do the Frankenstein walk. So everybody, we're going to reach those Frankenstein arms out. We're going to see if we ate enough carbohydrates today, if we have enough energy to move our body around, okay? 
okay, I think you guys did. So reach those arms out. And even if you're sitting, you can reach those arms out. Frankenstein walk looks like this. We're going to tap the opposite foot to the opposite hand and walk kind of big and rigid like a monster and like Frankenstein. So this is a great way to move your body, get that blood flowing and whew, keep that body happy and healthy. Okay. So that's a great way to get up and get moving and move that energy around. So we might have used some protein to keep our muscles strong. So one thing we're going to do for our upper body, we're going to, and everybody that's doing this, you don't even have to stand up for this one. You're going to squeeze your hands really tight. We're going to work the bicep muscle right here and see how strong we are. And if we are using all that protein in our body. So we're going to squeeze those arms out. We're going to squeeze them up into a bicep curl just like that and if you happen to have something oh i have a pumpkin right here look at this i'm going to do some squeeze it up so you can go home and do some pumpkin curls when you get home and squeeze those arms up just like that so frankenstein walks and pumpkin curls when you get home to use all those carbohydrates and protein that i know you guys are eating so remember that one or write it down if you have your paper with you Whew, after all that right i hope you guys have lots of water with you so when we sweat, we're losing water. We're also losing salt. And we need to make sure we take those things back in and keep our body, again, happy and healthy, right? Hope you guys all are bringing a water bottle at school. A reusable one is a great way to be uh, healthy to our environment, right? So we're not throwing that plastic away. And you can fill it up at school, at recess, at PE, at lunch, before and after school. And we always want to think about drinking water before you're thirsty. That will keep your body healthy, okay? And those um, water is gonna help move those nutrients where they need to go, okay? Our body is up to 70% water. So there's a lot of water in our body helping to get those nutrients where they need to go. Fats. So who's heard that you don't wanna eat a lot of fats because they're not good for your body, right? Fat is really important, especially for our brain. Our brain is actually made up of a lot of fat, actually. And when we eat healthy fats, like there's some healthy oils, avocados. Who likes avocados? I love double two hands up for me. I love avocados. That is a great healthy fat. That's really great for our brain. So as we're in school and we're learning so much, we want to make sure we're taking care of our body so that our brain can really remember and use all those things we're being told in school. So fats are really important for our body and for our brain health. And we wanna think about, here's one tip. If something is solid, right? Solid liquids and gas. If it's in a solid form, if it's not moving, when it's um, in room temperature, they're not as good for our hearts, okay? So those are things like butter. So we're thinking about those solid, those solid fats. Those are the fats that are the unhealthy fats. Think about the liquid fats are going to be your healthier fats, okay? Love it. So think about all these different foods. There's actually the same amount of carbohydrates in all of these vegetables. Maybe you've eaten some of those. Maybe you haven't eaten some of those. I think I see some raspberries in there, some beets, some broccoli and some cabbage, lots of different things that you can eat to get 30 grams of carbohydrates. That's a lot. And guess what? You get all of these different nutrients. Remember those micronutrients? So in the same amount of carbohydrates, you could eat one hamburger bun. Do you think that your body would be more full and more healthy if you had all of these fruits and vegetables or one hamburger bun? I'm thinking it's all those colorful, eat the rainbow fruits and vegetables, right? So making those healthy choices of knowing I can get the same amount of carbohydrates to give my body the energy I need. And I can eat all these different fruits and vegetables to keep my body healthy. Oh my goodness. Nutrition labels. Have you guys seen these? They are on all foods that are packaged. So will you see this on an apple that you see in the produce stand or at the farmer's market or at Publix? You won't see it on one apple because that's called a whole food, a whole food that has not been processed. If you get something like applesauce, that is processed, that has been through a process, the apple went through a process to get into the package. And so our government puts these labels on them to tell you exactly what's in there. But we need some science skills 
to interpret what this label is telling us so we can make some smart choices to be happy and healthy. So if you have that paper, you can write some notes down on here too, or just remember it in your brain and maybe talk about it after class as well with your teacher and your classmates. I have one trick I wanna point out on here. Something that talks about in number one in the green, it says there's one serving size, excuse me, one serving is one cup. But this is the little trick. This, all of this information is about one cup of whatever this item is that we're talking about. But in your package, maybe it's a bag of chips that maybe you'd eat all of them. There's actually two servings in this whole bag. So they kind of trick you. A lot of small packages that look like single servings like to trick you like this. So we see in here the total a number of calories for one cup, one serving is 250. But if you eat the whole bag, that we said is two servings, how many calories is that going to be? You guys can shout it out, write it down, think it in your head. 250 times two or 250 plus 250. So there's actually 500 calories in here. And those calories are what we need to give us energy. So we need calories, but you need to know that this serving of the nutrition facts are two servings in here. So the calories are the energy. Calories are not a bad thing because what do we need? We need energy to do our Frankenstein walks, to do our pumpkin curls, right? We need all of those nutrients, those macro and micronutrients and the calories and the energy that that food gives us to be able to be active and healthy. So we don't want to not eat calories. Don't, don't say that we want to not eat calories, right? We want to eat the calories that keep us healthy. So we want to think about those nutrients that we just talked about. This is what's great about these scientists that helped us to break down all these nutrients that are in the foods. They're telling us exactly what they are and also the percentages. So just checking out the nutrition labels, maybe reading it with mom or dad, grandma and grandpa at home and kind of be a, a grocery store scientist or a farmer market scientists when you go out and see what is in these foods that we're buying and we're eating all the time. Is it going to be a good choice, a healthy choice to give my body that energy I need and maybe help your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas make some shopping lists or some recipes that'll include some things that you like to eat and some things that are healthy. Super fun to be involved with what you're eating and learning about it as you go. So here's some labels. I'm just going to show this really quick to kind of compare. One thing is the different kinds of yogurt. It looks like it's almost the same thing, but there's some little differences when it's fat-free or if it's whole milk. Or sometimes if you go to McDonald's, so they give you a choice if you want apple slices or french fries. Maybe it's a good idea to look at what's in those things before we decide to eat them. Are they going to give us energy that we need to be healthy? Or are they gonna make us kind of feel tired and sluggish because we don't have any of those nutrients? Always good to look at those labels. So calories are, are the food and the energy to give us to play and grow. This is just talking about my friend right here. She's a girl that she can uh, eat about 160 calories from those solid fats. We talked about those solid fats that stay solid at room temperature, but one order of French fries gives her 168 calories. That's more than she needs for the whole day. So we wanna think about that before we eat those foods, if it's a good choice or if there's maybe a better choice that we could make. Oh, okay. So now we're going to think about taking care of our mind and our body. This is a great way to keep our mind healthy. We talked about eating those healthy fats that'll help keep our brain healthy because we're learning so much in school. And I wanted to give you a quick idea that you can take home, maybe use in school or maybe use at home as well to help reduce our stress, right? We're thinking about and we're learning about so much at school and here at the St. Pete Science Fest. But sometimes it's nice to just take a breath and calm down. So we're gonna use our fingers for this one. Can you guys wiggle your fingers a little bit for me? Maybe roll out those shoulders a little bit for me. Excellent. So thinking about slowing down, calming our mind, and thinking about one thing at a time. So we have four words that we're going to say. You guys ready for them? We're going to touch our first finger to our thumb just like this and say one word. I'll say it and you can repeat it back after me. Ready? Peace. Peace. Begins. Begins. With. 
me. All right, ready? We'll shake them out again one more time. Make sure we're rolling those shoulders back, relaxed. Here we go. We'll say all at the same time this time. Take a deep breath in. Peace begins with me. Should we try the other side? See how, how talented these fingers are today. Ready? This is a good way to help clear our mind and focus on one thing at a time. Here we go. Ready? Peace begins with me. All right, I'm not gonna say it this time. I'm gonna see if you guys can say it. Are you ready? I'll do it with you. Here we go. Woo. Did you get it? I think you did. I hope you teach that to somebody at home that maybe I might need a good way to relax, unwind, and have a really healthy and happy weekend. Thank you so much. I see Harris is back. I just wanted to tell you guys all about Healthy St. Pete as part of the city of St. Petersburg. Here's some pictures of some kids doing some of our super fun programs. We have lots of different workouts all over the city of St. Petersburg and parks throughout the city. We have online cooking classes through our partners at All Children's Hospital. So lots of great things. If you or your teacher wants to write this website down, you can find out lots more information. Thank you, Christy. Yes, I, I, I'm very familiar with you all. You do wonderful work. I, I'm hoping everyone takes advantage of this. There's so many free opportunities, which is even more amazing that it's right here in our community. And Christy does a great job with that. I love the idea of using a water bottle to help keep a healthy body and a healthy environment. Such a neat way really? um, to wrap that around in our, in our um, St. Pete Science Festival and to help our community. So um, we have a question coming in right now. Rowan from Oakhurst. Hey, Rowan, thank you for being here in Oakhurst, way to represent. Rowan wants to ask, how many types of vegetables are there? Wow, that is a great question, Rowan. And I don't have the answer to that. That might be for another scientist, like a crop scientist or a vegetable scientist or a farmer probably. But the interesting thing is, is that there's probably new types of plants and vegetables growing all the time. That's what farmers do best is they make sure they grow the most efficient and effective types of plants. So there are actually new types of vegetables growing and fruits growing every day to make sure that they're hard and they have the most nutrients for us. So that's another really interesting part of science is how crops are grown and how they make, it, make us healthy and how they get to us uh, from the farm to our table. It's certainly, and, and I'm actually familiar with a local scientist here, uh, Rowan, and for everyone listening, I, I, I'm familiar with a local scientist that took two different types of vegetables and did a hybrid, made a whole new one. And how neat is that? Amazing. Something we have never seen before. So here we are, people creating a whole new vegetable um, right from, from the earth too. So really neat. Um, what are some opportunities? You mentioned the website and um, maybe you could put that back up real quick. What are some opportunities for families to get involved, Christy? Sure, that's a great question. Um, families, um, or it's super important for, um, you know, families, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, moms, and dads to all be doing these healthy activities together. So I mentioned one of the um, kids in the kitchen classes that we have every Wednesday night. There's a free cooking class that you can do online. You just pull it up on your computer. Um, you can do it with your family. And there's a dietitian that helps you cook a recipe right in your kitchen. And we actually have a, a grant program that if you live in the St. Petersburg area and can get to our produce partner, you can pick up $10 of free produce and take those vegetables home with you, fruits and vegetables to cook that recipe in your home. So really learning, like I said, it's great for you guys to cook these recipes with mom and dad, make the shopping list with them, research those food labels, and then go ahead and cook all that with the, each other. So we love to have families produce participating together. It, this is amazing, Christine. I just want to thank you so much and thank the city of St. Pete for doing this. I mean, free food, free fun, free family time. It's just all around a win for our community. Um, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you and healthy St. Pete. Please talk to your families about this. Get involved. It's right here in our backyard. It's a lot of activities in the parks. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. We're going to take a little break right now and also keep in mind too, right below the video screen is a button to click if you have questions for our upcoming 
um, speakers. We'd love to hear from you. And thank you all. We'll see you in just a couple minutes. Thanks, Christy. Bye-bye.